Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Deep Dive Distrography. Today, I am joined by Dennis from Spirit in the Room. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, you got a new EP called Flamingo. Yes, from sir. From my understanding, it's a bit of a concept record. Is that right? fair to say? Sure. Yeah. We can go <laughs> a, a bit of a concept record. A little, little bit. A little bit. What kind of went into the writing for this the CP? What went? In, what do you mean? Like the what went into the lyrics? Yeah, yeah. Where where this you know stories kind of come from? My life at the time, you know, <laughs> my life at the time was a bit of uh, a change, as it was for everybody else. You know, going through that whole shutdown and whatnot. I, I don't know how long have you been out in Scotland uh three years now three years yeah was it did you guys get shut down yeah <laughs> very much so yeah so yeah i mean life at that time was pretty difficult um everything kind of changed not, not only for the world but in my life everything came to a, a great <laughs> there was a big fork in the road as to where i'm going you know and I chose to go a different direction, and um, yeah, a document. I, I I had moved into a, a new house with a, I had a couple of roommates, and it was a bit it was it was a bit chaotic. I, I went through a separation, and I went from living with a partner for a long time. We were together, and then I moved in with, with a couple of dudes that were pretty out of their minds and I kind of just I'm a recluse as it is man I don't I, I find comfort and being you know with some close friends about mostly by myself so I mean I I, I would have isolated anyway you know but I, I was living in this house with these people man and I just I just hid in my room I lived there for like 11 months and I hid in my room and I just fucking wrote wrote and recorded no matter how much i didn't want to i just did and so yeah the lyrics for that for this ep definitely it it, it, it to the point to where i i have a hard time listening to listening to it because the shit just it's so familiar it's it's still very fresh and so yeah a lot of a lot of uh turmoil yeah that's where the this came from and did you find it I mean, obviously, it, it wasn't the best situation to be writing in, but how did you find the actual process of sitting down to write and record? That uh, the the process of doing that was easy because I'm used to it and I do it a lot. I do it all the time. It's kind of my it's it's what I do. I'm not into sports. I'm not really. I'm, I'm just into writing songs, so I, I do it all the time. But at the time, nobody knew what was going to happen, so we didn't. Nobody knew whether anything was worth a fuck, you know. Like, what? Okay, I'm going to put all this energy into something. Is it worth it? You know. And essentially, it is worth it because you're doing it for you, you know, and you're you're helping yourself out. But man, there was just so much uncertainty as to what was going to happen next. And um, so the act of actually doing it all was was great. It was easy and felt very therapeutic. But getting to the point to where I wanted to do it, that was that was the bitch. <laughs> that was the the pain in the ass part. And now that it's kind of coming out, obviously you do have a single out with a very long title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but obviously you probably started to hear some feedback from the fans. How has that been so far? It's been really great. It's better. It's been a lot better than I expected. Um, I'm I'm pretty hard on myself, so I always think that what I'm doing is questionable or not going to be understood or accepted or something like that. But the the response has been very great. I'm, I'm very happy with it, and I I can't wait to it's like the it's probably the first time i've actually been really excited to hear about what other people thought in regards to what i'm doing and so yeah i look forward to hearing more you know, and 
I was just going to say, your style is very, very different. It It is a bit hard to pin down kind of what the what the musical style is right what how, basically how would you describe what you do with spirit in the room uh experimental rock i, I was having this conversation earlier I, I just i've heard people say it was metal i've heard people say it was pop i've heard all these things and it's great i like to hear what other people think i don't think it's my job anymore to so once you put something out, it's not yours anymore. It's not your job to define it, really. It's whatever, you know, what everybody else wants to yeah. call it. And so I, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, but what, if I had to, I just would call it experimental rock. I, I, I grew up listening to artists that just changed within with for, for in between each album. So like PJ Harvey or, or Faith No More, every album is just different, you know. So that's kind of it's natural for me to to do something left field, you know, and and I definitely don't really care if it bums people out or not, you know. I mean, you want people to like it or whatever, but if it bums you out that, you know, one minute I'm singing soft falsetto and the next minute I'm barking like a dog, if whatever, you know, I don't it's just what's gonna happen. So but um it's ex experimental rock. <laughs> <laughs> Freak rock, uh, noise rock. I've heard all these things. Um, it's just, yeah, it's rock and roll with some experimental tendencies. And obviously, you, you've been at it quite a while with Spirit in the Room. It's been coming up on a decade, from my understanding. Possibly longer if, if there's anything secretive out there. 13 years, yeah. I started Spirit in the Room 13 years ago. Uh, about three months ago it was 13 years ago how do you feel you've kind of evolved as a musician as a songwriter across that time man i was 25 or 24 when i started it i'm 38 now you know so life has a, a way of changing you i feel i feel that um or time has a way of changing you. Know, I feel that my songs have gotten better. I've definitely matured as a songwriter. Uh, I'm a lot less reactive than I used to be. I used to be pretty jumpy. I'm still a jumpy person. Like, don't fucking come up behind me. But I, I used to be a, a pretty reactive person, you know? Um, I guess that would apply to more of my personal life or whatever, but to answer that question, I'd say the songs have gotten a lot better and I've gotten a lot more comfortable with, within my own skin, with my own voice. You know, I've, I, I, I've been singing in bands and just singing since I was maybe 11, 11 or 12. And I, I still, I, I, I've still never really felt comfortable with my voice. And it just comes in time, I guess. The more you do it, I, you know, I suppose, the more comfortable you get or the better you get. So I feel that I've gotten a lot more comfortable with myself and I'm more focused on actually writing a good song as opposed to what sounds cool, you know. And is, is Spirit in the Room a, a band you take out, you play shows with, or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a live band. Um, and yeah, they're amazing. Uh, I've had a few different lineups, but uh, I, I believe I finally found my, my, uh, my crew, you know, my, my, my squad, whatever you want to call it. Um, I got a great drummer, a, a great guitar player, and I send them songs, you know, new songs to learn like every couple weeks or so you know and they're always receptive always down to you know they're they're very they're very respectful of the songs you know they're not the type to come in and be like well this would sound a lot better if there was more me you know yeah we've had people come and go that came and went because there wasn't enough of them in the project you know and it's that's understandable, you know. I, I've been in other bands before, other people's bands, you know. And 
but yeah, I, I, it is a live band. I do have a live band, and and this is the first record where I've actually included my live band in the studio. I've always done everything myself in the studio. Yeah. Um, but these guys, this this record that we're getting ready to put out, this has Kevin's my guitar player is Kevin Bombay, uh, and my drummer is Philip Bailey. Uh, can't say enough good things about those guys, man. So when it comes to playing shows, have you do you have anything planned around that for the record? Yeah, we have a couple things lined up. I got we got some stuff booked in uh, October, and a couple things in uh, you know in the works in between. Uh, we we spent excuse me since January we played a couple. We we've been playing since January. Our last show was in May. We decided we decided to kind of just focus on the the album and the release process and, and the content and all that shit that goes into it. And so, yeah, once, uh, once all this hype starts to settle, I don't even know all this hype, like it's hype. <laughs> I don't know. But once this starts to kind of settle, we're going to, we're going to kind of come out of the, of the fog and do our thing. Are there yeah. any particular songs off of Flamingo you're, you're hoping to get out on stage? Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna do them all. We'll do the whole thing. We'll do all of them. Uh, we we we've been playing. Uh, we've been playing three of the songs live. We had played played them throughout the, you know, the beginning of the year. We were playing them, and that's great. You know, nothing like testing a record out before it comes out. You know, a lot of bands they'll put out a record and they'll start playing it after it's out. You know, to promote it, and they find through that cycle that ooh maybe this this song being that it's a fan favorite doesn't necessarily work with us you know so it, yeah. it's been good to test the waters with these songs you know and um so yeah we're gonna do them all which one would you say is your favorite to to play oh man i used to be a machine i used to be a machine that, that's the last song on the ep that song for me has always been sort of the uh the Jack Torrance card of, of, of the band, you know, that, that song's very, um, it's an intense song. Uh, I, you don't have the record, do you? I do. <laughs> you? Yeah, so, yeah. 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 You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. That song's really fun to play. And then obviously, like you said, you've been at it for, for ages and your band camp is just full of music how do you kind of go about picking and choosing what works live, what doesn't and what needs to come out? That's a great question, man. That's a definitely a tedious process. It, it takes a lot of focus and, and work within, within the, the room with the guys, you know, um, we, I mean, I, I, like I said, I send them a lot of music every other week or so to, you know, new songs and stuff. And it, it never, it's never officially like a spirit in the room song until it works in the rehearsal room. So yeah, going back through the catalog of music that I've put out throughout the years, it's um, it's always interesting to like send them something because these guys, the guys that are in the, 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 the live incarnation of the band at this point are, they've been with me for about three years. So there's stuff that I've put out five years ago or whatever they did they never heard you know they don't know them so it's always fun to to do that you know yeah and obviously it, it has been a long time that, that you've been putting stuff out like i said your band camp is just absolutely packed with stuff and well you do have a sound it does change so drastically right from here to there so yeah i can understand how it'd be kind of hard to piece together a set based off that yeah yeah it's fun to try <laughs> so when it comes to influences for how you write who would who would you basically cite as an influence how long we got <laughs> <laughs> man I, i'll say this straight up first and foremost i i don't think i'd be a songwriter if it weren't for pj Harvey. I mean, PJ Harvey's, you know, I had always written pieces of songs or parts or 
a riff here and there or a line or a melody or something, but my songs didn't fully start becoming a full song until after I became obsessed with her. And I've been obsessed with her for so long. So I, I, I definitely credit. There's something about, there's something really raw and primal and simplistic to the naked ear naked ear because if you're going back and you're trying to play some of the things that she's written on guitar and saying at the same time it's not fucking simple but uh definitely I, I i would definitely credit pj harvey for a lot of stuff um huge nick cave fan i mean um i also like i was i'll take inspiration from morbid angel like i listen to a lot of that stuff for I don't know. I'm not a big fan of uh, an old dude told me once uh, too much rock and roll is bad for your rock and roll. And um, yeah, I go through trips of just straight up listening to harsh noise or crazy black metal, death metal shit, you know, and I take inspiration from that. And, and yeah, like Henry, someone like Henry Mancini, I think the first song I ever learned how to play a guitar was uh the peter gunn theme song um by henry mancini i have a lot of his records i'm a huge fan and then you know jesus lizard or uh you know fucking pantera you know like <laughs> there, there's so much dude there's that ah, god i could go on I, I, swans swans is another the residents you know stop me now <laughs> so just a little bit of everything goes into everything you write really god damn right and it just comes down to the attitude on the day yes sir <laughs> i mean th there's really no better way to write is there if you if you try to maintain something very specific you end up burning yourself out yeah that's that goes back to what i was saying about too much rock and roll is bad for yeah. the rock and roll, you know an old blues man told a friend of mine and i that one night and i was probably 17 when i heard that quote from this guy this guy said that and so yeah i've always kind of like i won't listen to bands that people say remind like if someone's like hey this band reminds me of you guys do you listen to them or you should check them out like i don't i won't do it i, I don't like to uh i don't like to like I don't like to rub elbows or shoulders with people that fly too close to the same sun as me. You yeah. Know I mean? Yeah. You try to try to keep it kind of outside of your circle. Absolutely. It's good. And, and, you know, maybe, I mean, it's good for the art, but maybe, maybe I'm missing out on some great bands, you know, and I, no doubt, no doubt about that, but I, I just don't care. <laughs> I mean, there, there's so many bands. You're always going to miss out on some great stuff. Right. So you may as well just stick to what you know you like and yeah. you, you can draw some some different inspiration from. Yep. Because, yeah, the last thing you want is to is end up not trying to copy, but, you know, trying to take inspiration from somebody who's doing what you're doing. And it's just, yeah, what's, like what's the point there? I can tell that you and I have watched the same birthday party home video. You know, there's no need for me to listen to what you do yeah. <laughs> or something, you know, I don't know. hate to be a dick if that sounds dick, but whatever. It is what it is. You know who else I love a lot, man, and they never get mentioned and, and I'm always fucking repping this band and I get laughed at. I really love this band, Dead Z. I've loved Dead Z since I was a teenager still listen to their two records to this day i love that band you know and they're another huge inspiration i don't know if you've heard of them but no but i'll throw them in my uh spotify there's a chance you might hate them <laughs> you might hate them i but then again there's nobody in the game ever to this day that i know of that mixes new romantic with doom sludge and death metal like i'm talking new romance early duran duran japan shit like that like this band mixes and, and they did it when they were doing this in a time where it wasn't cool 
these guys, I think they, they, they got started in like 97. They got signed by Korn. And so they kind of came out by it, it, during that whole, the new metal era, but they are, they're not a new metal band at all. And that's probably why they never, they weren't very successful because they were, there were so many elements. There was so much to dig into as a fan. Like I've never liked Star Wars, but I like Dead Z. Yeah, and I mean, that, I guess it's the idea that they didn't play the game. No. Yeah, you know, new metal was what was the thing at the time. If you didn't do doom metal, you were gonna fall behind, and yeah, yeah. unfortunately, people just got left behind. This is true. So, if you had to pitch a song from them, <laughs> what song would you tell people to listen to? Um. <laughs> I'd say Lake Warmog. Lake Warmog and uh, Mansion World. Or maybe like uh, Mansion World is a good one, but that's that kind of shows off the new romantic side. Uh, Lake Warmog or uh, Flowing Glower. It's a good Doom song. Uh, yeah. I could send you, I could send you some shit too. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I don't mind throwing them in the comments. So if but for anyone who is listening and doesn't know the band, cool. not only is your single, I'm going to have to read it out here because of how long the, uh, the song name is, The Baird of Paradise alights only upon the hand that does not grasp it. That song's in the comments or in the description. And then, yep, whatever right. songs I can find. <laughs> Right on, right on. And I like that everybody's having to write that. All the journalists, and everybody's <laughs> got to like write that, double check. How is it? Is it da, 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 da. It's cool, man. Uh, originally, like that was the song title from the get go. But there was a couple times where like people would just call it for short Bird of Paradise. And it's absolutely wrong. It's not, it's it's, it's a total, the, the saying the Bird of Paradise alights only upon me and it does not grasp is a completely different meaning than the, just the birds of paradise you know? yeah i mean seriously you could have picked any other song off this ep to be a single this the label, <laughs> the oh, label okay. yeah they, they went with that <laughs> fair enough it just yeah. it's just a little bit of like maybe you did it just to mess with people and that'd be funny i mean don't get me wrong that'd be hilarious i think it's funny too because if you look at the last couple of anselmo releases the titles have been pretty pretty long so I, I, you know somebody gets it <laughs> well last but not least dennis do you have anything you would like to say to your fans listening in thank you thank you and keep listening you know listen to other bands listen to things even if you don't like it at first i remember the first time i heard portal i didn't like it at first it was, it was just too much yeah Eight years later, like I could, I have, I, I am obsessed with Portal, and I, I've been listening to Portal ridiculously for years, and I still hear things that I never heard the last couple of years, you know. So, I'd say to to be a little patient, you know. People are very impatient nowadays. Just be patient. Yeah. Listen. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you for your time. For anyone who is listening, Spirit in the Room's new EP, Flamingo, is out August 26th. I need to look over and make sure I got that right. But yeah, it's out August 26th. Make sure you pick it up, stream it, do whatever you need to do, listen to it, and it. be patient with it. Be patient. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. I very much appreciate your time. You too, brother. Appreciate you.